Okay, let's now look at the muscles of the leg. And um, here's another good example of how we could reinforce a method of organizing because I can take the same approach to both legs. So the first order of business is to establish the anterior superior iliac spine. The next is to look for this border of this um, interior bit of the quad, this kind of teardrop shape that we get. And if we make a um, dotted line from there to that border, that's going to give us the um, path of the sartorius muscle, which we can't always see directly, but that vector is really key to um, to establish. We really want to kind of get that in mind. So I'll do the same over here. Establish this. This we're looking for this kind of um, teardrop shape. You can see I've got something like that. And then I'm going to look at that vector. And in fact, here you can see the sartorius very clearly. Now, it's not a dead straight line like I've um, suggested. It does curve, but that point to point um, journey that it makes, and it comes around and to the inside of the leg and contributes to that, that fullness. The next thing from the um, anterior superior iliac spine is to look at another muscle that comes off, which is the tensor of the fascia lata. And that muscle is is rather like a sort of elongated, but very sort of full sausage-like form. I don't think I've, um, I'm not quite happy with how I rendered that because I'm trying to follow the lines a bit too much. And sometimes you want to do that, but I think, you know, here it's important to give you a sense of what that muscle sort of feels like. Now the really key thing is this connection, this V shape that is formed between the tensor fascia lata and the sartorius. So here we'll see something similar. We'll have to infer quite a bit because um, we've got some sense of the, uh, the tensor muscle coming over there. And we're looking at just below the um, this bony landmark of the ACES um, is that little V shape, and that's going to be important. And you'll see why, because these paths, these um, vectors and little notes, give us the boundaries of the borders of the quads, and they sep it separates them from the other muscle groups. So when you're looking at the limbs, um, the concept of grouping muscles becomes even really important because um, there's too many to handle if you look at them individually. We've just seen that in the forearm. Um, you notice that I kind of grouped them in sections. I did the ones going over the back of the hand, did the flexors on the um, underside of the arm, and then we did the ridge muscles on top. If you group the or batch the tasks like that, it's not so bad. So next job, looking at the kneecap the kneecap has a flat tendinous area coming up like this. And out there too. And from this V shape, um, kind of comes the muscle of the front of the thigh and that's called the rectus femoris and that ends in a tendon that goes down to the knee and it's almost like a elongated egg diamond shape sort of configuration so something like this So we're looking at something a little bit like that. And then on the outside, 
we've got this tendon going up a bit and we're looking at the vastus lateralis. And that's this um, really large muscle that forms the, a really big portion of the external contour of the leg. <clears throat> now on the inside of this border of the sartorius, we've got the mass of the um, adductor muscles, and they're the muscles of the inside of the thigh. And the good news here is that when you look at the anatomy books, it looks like a nightmare because there's so many of them. But really, in practice, they're just one large egg-like volume. Or sort of, yeah, kind kind of like a, a elongated egg, really. We're not seeing much of it on this side, but but it's there. And um, we'll also just put in the sartorius a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, finally, we'll look at just firming some of these um, aspects up. We've got the tensor muscle on this side, and we're seeing on this side the gluteus medius. And that gives you a, a a decent schematic of those large muscles of the leg. So um, something I like about studying the forearms is that after you've done them, um, everything else seems a lot um, simpler. The forms in the leg are much larger, um, much more much more simple to handle. Um, we'll go down to the knee and <clears throat> just look at that in um, a bit, well, recap really, because uh, we looked at that in the beginning. So we've got the, the patella, which is the kneecap itself. Um, sort of five-sided, it's almost like a pentagon shape, really. Um, kind of a very rough bone, quite thick. And beneath that is a good sort of packet of fluid and fat. And a lot of um, skin, because there needs to be extra skin for the uh, knee to bend. You get the same at the elbow. Then the we're looking at the plateau of the tibia. So this um, the kneecap is attached to a tendon at the top, and then also at the bottom where it finds this, there's a kind of bump on the front of the tibia. And then we're going into the shin, directly exposed, all the way down its length. The um, tibia is rather um, conical in cross section, sorry, um, not conical at all, <laughs> triangular. Um, I was thinking of something else at the same time. Um, so it's something like this, like a, a tri extended triangle. That's where you get this kind of sharp edge. Um, next, we're going to look at the muscles of the calf. And I'm going to really treat the, the, the gastrocnemius here, which is the, the main muscle of the calf, and the uh, soleus there, which is like a kind of, um, almost like a bed for the gastrocnemius. It's like a, a padding. Um, and the thing to notice in this view is that you've got a really nice kind of double curve 
in the leg at that point. And you can see the, the gastrocnemius resting on top of the soleus. So it's going down like that and across like that. Um, and there's, a, there's another small muscle here that just sort of makes that transition. Um, then we're going out into the outside ankle, so the inside ankle, the internal, um, the medial malleolus. That's a really substantial bony point. <clears throat> and then much like the forearm, we've got a large muscle sending tendons out across this join of the ankle to the foot um, and outwards towards the toes. So um, there's a few going on here. Um, there's one that's going towards the big toe and it's called the tibialis anterior. It's perhaps the largest um, of these long muscles of the leg. <clears throat> And uh, this, the tendon um, here is really prominent where it crosses the uh, ankle joint. So you'll see that really uh, clearly on your own foot if you um, move your toes around. And then on the outside, we've got many other um, sort of long muscles, peroneus longus and so on, um, which we'll deal with in a in a different video when we look at a more of an outside view of the leg. Let's just go over to this side and look at the kneecap again. I really find it helpful to imagine the kneecaps facing a particular direction because you can see um, they're pointed in quite different um, directions and the same kind of the same um, direction as the toes in this case and it just helps you avoid that um, two-dimensional look and as you um, practice looking at the body in this way you'll um, increasingly do that naturally um, it just becomes part of your routine as it were just going to uh, mention uh, the metatarsals of the foot a little bit because this got, you've got this kind of very um, substantial bone for the instep of the foot and then similar bones for the um, leading to the construction of the toes. The heel sticking out behind and the um, tarsal bones at the ankle. The toes themselves have a kind of another step like structure. Like that. We indicated before the idea of the tibia there. This is where we'd see the tibialis anterior tendon kind of wanting to go to the inside of the foot. And again, there's the gastrocnemius sitting on top of the soleus. One, two, like that. So at this point, we've done a pretty good um, overall assessment of this figure. I'm just going to finish off by looking at the schematic indication of these muscles. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. 
we'll deal with the head separately. I think it needs its own kind of um, special video. Here's the trapezius coming from the back and the structures of the skull, as we said before. Now, there's a few things that it might be good to look at with these drawings um, a bit separately, the, the play of light and shadow that I mentioned before, and the um, we, we also need at some point to look at the um, issue of, of muscle fibres and their directions and, and how they work. But we'll leave those as separate topics for now and move on to another figure.